<laughs> All right, so, so here's, yeah, I did. So here's, here's the main issue, though. Um, I'm, I'm going to propose, my position tonight is that this is important, that this is very important, um, and it's getting worse. In 1976, 171 million dollars was spent on the uh, presidential race. 1976, 171 million dollars. Now, if that were to increase at the rate of inflation, in 2008 the number would have been 639 million dollars, which is a huge increase from 171 million to 639 million. So over three times, close to four times. That's if the money that was spent in the 2008 election had increased at the rate of inflation. In fact, the amount of money that was spent in the 2008 race was 1748000000 So that's more than 10 times uh, what was spent in 1976. And you, what you can see there is that money is increasing at more than three times the rate of inflation, which means that in elections, money's getting more, more important and your votes are getting less important. And that's been a continuing trend uh, probably since they invented the television set. Um, take in, take, let's take three issues. Let's take the environmental issue. In 2009 and 10, the oil and gas industry contributed over $30 million to candidates. And this is just the tip of the iceberg because a lot of these uh, fundraising events um, it'll be something like this. It's in Washington, it's at a hotel, the senator shows up or the congressman shows up, and uh, they get a check from the, let's say it's from the um, Oil and Gas Association. So they get a check from the oil and gas, and there's a lot of oil and gas associations, or uh, there's an oil association and a gas association, and an offshore oil association, and an onshore oil association, and a Texas oil association, and a Colorado oil association. So they get all those checks from those PACs. But then they also get checks from the individual executives of all the committees. And in fact, some of those executives show up and they invite the senator, let's say it's a senator from Colorado, they say, oh, you know, nice to meet you, senator. You know, here's a check. Thank you very much for your support. Um, you know, I love Colorado. I've got a place in Vail. The next time you're in Colorado, come up and <laughs> stay at my place at Beaver Creek. And they, by the way, you know, this bill that's coming up in the Senate next week, it's not really a good bill. It's these radical environmental groups are uh, proposing it. It'll destroy jobs. And, um, and, and our lobbyist will be glad to give you the information about that. And I think he also has a bunch of checks from the other executives that weren't able to make it here today. So that's how those things go. So the only checks that show up as being from the environmental organization, I mean from the, um, from the oil and gas association are the ones that are from the actual oil and gas associations. The checks that come from all the executives uh, don't show up. So that when I say $30 million, it sounds like a lot, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. To give you maybe even a better example of how the money influences politics, they spent $321,851,000 863 dollars on lobbying. That's 300 million on lobbying. They have 963 lobbyists. This is the oil and gas companies in, in Congress. 963 lobbyists. There's only 535 members of Congress. There's 435 members in the House and 100 in the uh, Senate. So, you know, it's hard to imagine I guess they work in shifts, so one can sleep while the other is um, <coughs> The Oil and Gas Association spent $75 million lobbying against two bills related to the oil spill in the Gulf. One of the bills would have increased safety <coughs> regulations. We, we know a lot about the oil spill in the Gulf if you watch any of the news channels. One of the things that I think people tend to forget is 11 people were killed in the original explosion. So safety does seem to be an issue, not just for the environment and for the people that use the Gulf, but also for the people that work on the rigs. And they spent $75 million opposing that bill. And the other bill was to um, lift or raise the caps. Right now, if an, uh, the liability caps, right now if an oil company does something that causes a billion dollars <coughs> worth of damage, there's a cap. They only, I think it's 50 million. They only have to spend 50 million dollars 
So they're not responsible for the entire damages that they cause. There shouldn't be caps. They should be responsible for the entire damages that they cause. Because right now, the system favors reckless behavior because they don't have to pay for reckless behavior. They have to pay for a small percentage of their reckless behavior. It's not in, if you talk about free markets, and, and the other side frequently does, then you should pay for the uh, downside of your reckless behavior. That'll decrease the reckless behavior. Same thing with the banks. But we don't have, we don't, they don't actually have a free market. They have a subsidized market. And here with the oil companies, it's a protected market because um, they don't have to pay the downside. It would make them more careful if they did. Okay, that's oil and gas. <coughs> and that sounds like a lot of money and it sounds like bad things are happening and it's true, uh, but it's minor compared to healthcare. Remember there was $30 million spent um, by on, on contributions from the oil and gas industry. Healthcare was $159 million in 2010 in contributions. 30 million in oil and gas sounds like a lot. Healthcare, 159 million. There, again, <coughs> there's only 400, well, 535 members of Congress. $159 million means that healthcare gives a third of a million dollars to every member of Congress. Now, in fact, they don't really give it to every member of Congress because there's safe seats and there's contested seats. The safe seats get much smaller amounts of money. The contested seats get millions of dollars. Um, they spent 589 million in lobbying. So 150 million in contributions, 589 million in lobbying. This is why there's no public option in healthcare reform. The Obama administration, and I think President Obama uh, has his heart in the right place and would like to do good things for the American people, but they, don't, they didn't even try to do uh, this public option. So that means that uh, healthcare reform got 30 million more customers for the private insurance market. The private insurance market. You have no other option except the private insurance market. And in the private insurance market, you're paying huge overhead. You're paying for um, a bunch of people that look over all your medical records when you make a claim to see if you didn't if, if you did something wrong, uh, wrong in your paperwork so that they don't have to pay you. you they all get salaries, they all get health care, and they also uh, get paid in order to deny claims. Um, so, and, and I don't know, maybe some of you know this, in the Bush administration, they passed a law, and this is insane, that says that pharmaceutical companies, that the United States government cannot negotiate with pharmaceutical companies for lower um, rates. Uh, Private insurance companies can, but <coughs> Medicare and Medicaid are not allowed to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies for lower rates. So, um, and that passed during the Bush administration, which you might think makes sense because the Bush administration had a lot of cronyism with uh, corporate types, but it never, it didn't get changed in the three years that President Obama's been in. In the first two years, he had a majority in the House and the Senate. They didn't change it because they didn't want to take on the pharmaceutical companies because of the money. All right, um, so that's environment, that's healthcare. Let's look at finance and insurance. Um, <coughs> they, remember, $30 million in campaign contributions from the oil and gas companies, $159 million in contributions from uh, healthcare. Uh, finance and insurance, $497 million in contributions. So that's a tripling from healthcare. $497 million, $458 million in lobbying. This is finance and insurance. That's why the taxpayers bailed out the uh, big banks, because the, when, 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 a le when a congressman looks out into the world and says, okay, I want to get elected the next time, what's going to be important to me getting elected? Do they see all of you? No. But do they see